Hi, my name is Mylon Lefevre, and music is in my blood. I got my first big break when Elvis Presley recorded a song I'd written at 17 years old. That moment changed my life forever. I went from having nothing to having my dreams come true. I toured the world and played with some of the biggest names in music and had more money than I knew what to do with. I finally hit rock bottom when I almost died from a drug overdose, and it became painfully obvious something had to change. Everything did change when I gave my life to Jesus at a second chapter of Acts concert in 1980. God instantly delivered me from drugs and totally turned my life around. I began to use my gift of music for the Lord and started a Christian band, Mylon and Broken Heart. It eventually grew to be one of the biggest Christian rock bands in the world at the time. We won several Grammys and Dove Awards, but most importantly, we led over 200,000 kids to Christ. Now, years later, I'm still living for Jesus and my wife, Christy, and I travel the globe proclaiming God's goodness. I've been from rock bottom to the mountaintop and I'm going all the way to heaven. So come on and join me on the road to freedom. Freedom. Today we are in the magnificent Banff National Park. We are in Banff, Alberta, Canada. We are at the incredibly wonderful and luxurious <laughs> Rim Rock Resort. And Christy and I have been here, what, I think we figured out 17 times. Mm -hmm. It's one of the places we came the first year. We didn't go here on our honeymoon. We went to Hawaii, but we uh, came up to preach in Calgary, Alberta, which we did earlier this week. Yes. And we always bring our skis, and, and it was the first year that we were married, and it was so romantic. These Rockies, oh, my They're goodness. They're beautiful. And this oh. town and these yeah. restaurants and I don't know. It was just, uh, you know, the yeah. the maple mm. syrup. I mean, these maple <laughs> leaves, these <laughs> Canadian, they get, everything is made maple up here. It's That's awesome. Right. It's cool. It's really good I on mean, pancakes. Oh, the pancakes. <laughs> My <laughs> Lord. So anyway, we've been having such an awesome time here, and they're going to be showing you all the stuff. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to you about friendship, which is really important if you're going to enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. True friendship, there's a difference. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about what the world calls friendship and what God calls friendship. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have one of my friends jump in here right quick because yes. uh, yesterday we went up to do some skiing. And uh, come on in here, Michael. This, here. this is my good buddy. <laughs> I this. wanted you to see this shine of a man up. here. Uh, <laughs> you guys won't believe this, but Mylon hit me in the eye yesterday. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, this is a true friend. How long have we been ministering together in different ways, Michael? Well, 92, I think we... 92, 1992. We made some records. We've done a lot. We, we made... Yeah. We spent five years on the road on motorcycles doing that church our on devotional, the run. Mm -hmm. our daily devotional, Church on the Run. Yeah. And now we're doing these TV shows. We just keep doing stuff. So anyway, we're friends. But we went up to ski yesterday, and we were going to video. I was going to be so cool because I've skied this mountain so much. But uh, it was whited out. We couldn't see yesterday. See. Yeah. We got no footage. But he got a black eye, and I didn't, and I fell. And I'm so thankful <laughs> that my true friend took that black <laughs> eye for me. Too. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Man, I just wanted you to know, true friends true find friend. a way to have fun and yes. keep rocking. That's it. And and you know what? True friends, and, and I'll just say this up front, you, you got to work at being true friends because everybody's a jerk sometimes. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care how much you love Jesus. Everybody does something selfish sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody is sometimes people get so overwhelmed that they can't see. The Bible says there's two sides to everything. But their, the life so, their life is so intense at the time, they can only see their side of the situation mm -hmm. and not yours. Yeah. And that's when... A true friend stands by you no matter what's going on. Now, we're talking about the Word of God, so let me say this. The reason we call our show On the Road to Freedom That's right. is because Jesus said, 
in John 8, 31 and 32, he said, if you'll continue in my word, and that's what we're going to do today, and that's what you're going to do with us, praise God. If you continue in my word, you will be my disciples truly, and you will know the truth, and it will make you free. And that's the will of God for your life, and that's our will for your life too. Yeah. Come on, baby, teach us about true friendship. Well, in, in talking about friendship, I want to give you this wonderful mm -hmm. definition. And by the way, the one giving you this wonderful definition is my best friend. <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so thankful for to be best friends with you, Amen. with our, you know, with your mate. That's such a mm. gift from the Lord. Yes, it and is. I encourage you, husbands and wives, to really enjoy each other Amen. as best friends. You know, we yes, we work together, and yes, we live together, but we also play together. Yes. We enjoy each other, don't we? Yes, we do. Baby. So we're enjoying being here together filming these shows for you. And again, this show is for you because we want you to live free and free indeed. That's what Jesus paid the Amen. price for you to live. Amen. And so today we're talking about true friendship is one of the ways that you enjoy the life God gave you. And the definition in Webster's 1828 dictionary, which is my favorite because it's founded, Noah Webster was a Christian. And so this dictionary is founded on Christian principles. In fact, much of the definitions, many of the definitions have verses with the definition. So when it came to this word, he defined friendship as an attachment to a person proceeding from intimate acquaintance. So you know this person well. True friendship, now I want to clarify that today because that's what we're talking about and there is a difference. True friendship is a noble and virtuous attachment. That means it's a good thing. Springing from a pure source. Mm -hmm. That means this friendship has no agenda. Yeah, come no on. No impure motive. Mm. A respect for worth or amiable qualities. False friendship is temporary. It's a temporary attachment springing from an interest, but it may change in a moment. To enmity. To enmity, right. Yeah. It can change in a moment. So we're talking about true friendship today that's founded from a, grounded on the Word of God, really. And that temporary, temporary friends use each other. Mm -hmm. They have an agenda and they use each other to get to where they want to go. Right. But true friends don't have an agenda. They just want their friends to be blessed. They want what God wants in their friend's life. Yeah. And they want to encourage and build up. And that's what ministry is. Jesus in, in uh, Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it says that God appointed apostles, prophets, teachers, preachers, and evangelists. And our job, the fivefold ministry, is to build up, encourage the body of Christ. And that especially means you're your loved ones and your friends and build them up and help them to be all that they can be for Jesus. Right. And it says there can be no friendship without confidence. Mm. And, you know, confidence is about uh, really about faith, about trust. Yes, trust yeah. There can be no true friendship without confidence and no confidence without integrity. Yes. So true friends keep their word. Yes, you they can, do. You can count on them. Their yay is yay, their nay is nay. Yes, and the first law of friendship is sincerity. That means That's this good. is genuine. Again, this is a pure motive. True friendship is based on love. Yes, That's it right. is. That's right. Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 9, man, this is good. Two are better than one. I, I, don't want, I want to stay amen on that deal right there. Yeah. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls. Mm. For he has no one to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? Wow. Though one may be overpowered by another when an enemy comes to attack, Two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken, the Word of God says. God, who is wisdom, says we need each other. Yeah, so this is important. Yeah. God is the one who's designed you for relationship. Yes. Relationships are very important to him, and he says two are better than one. It is better when you have a friend. And, and that also, and this is important to understand, is the reason some people think, well, I don't need to go to church because I can watch it online 
Or right. I can go out. Some people That's say it. they go fishing and, oh, I just love to be close to God in nature. Mm -hmm. No, the reason you need to go to church is he said, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together yes. because it's in working out your love for others mm -hmm. when they're hard to love sometimes. It's in working out staying a true friend instead of just getting offended easily and walking away from somebody just because they got on your nerves or they frustrated you or, or something. And by the way, we all do that. We all do that if we stay close enough together, if we work close enough together. Mm -hmm. And I mean, think of how close you have to be when you're married. If we can't work this stuff out, marriages won't last. Yeah. Companies won't stay together. Ministries won't stay together. Churches don't stay together over this one issue. Mm. What is true friendship? It is not wise to be a lone ranger. No, it's not. Whenever the wolves are hunting in a pack or the lions are hunting, they're looking for that one mm -hmm. injured one or that slow one who's young. But when that one gets off away from the rest of the pack, they attack it. That's what the devil does. If you're the Lone Ranger and you stay away from the rest of the body of Christ, you're easy pickings for the enemy. Mm. So we Ooh, need to build, so relationships to build relationships that are strong. Yes. At least two. Godly counsel is we see in Proverbs 27 verse 9, oil and perfume rejoice the heart. Mm -hmm. So does the sweetness of a friend's counsel that it comes, comes from, from his the heart. heart. Yes. Man, isn't that good? Yeah. It is sweet when somebody gives you real wisdom. Yeah, God said that's a good thing. That's, that's one of the things good that thing. true friends do for you is give you godly counsel. That's right. Amen. We need that in our lives. Proverbs 27 and verse 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens, sharpens. a friend. Yeah. I like that in the NLT. Mm hmm Psalm 119 and verse 105 is one of my favorites. It says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes. Why would anybody walk around stumbling and tripping and falling around in darkness when you could just simply cut the light on yeah. and walk with God? Amen. And that's what it's like when we share the word of God. We're shining a light so that you and everybody else who wants to, who's willing to, can walk in the light. Jesus said in Matthew 5 and 14 that we are the light of the world. Yeah. When you join Team Milan, you're helping me and Christy, and you're building the kingdom of God and putting it first. Amen. When you help finance us and pray for the places we go and the Bible studies that we do, yeah. we're shining a light so that others aren't walking around in darkness stumbling, Amen. but they actually get to enjoy walking Amen. with the Lord every day. So pray about joining Team Milan and helping us change the world one person at a time. sharpen each other. That means we challenge each other to keep coming up higher. We, we hold each other accountable. We point out, hey, dude, you know, we can do better than this. Come on now. We can do this. Let's, let's get after this. And we keep on and we don't quit trying. True yes. friends sharpen each other. This means we tell each other the truth mm -hmm. in love. We hold each other accountable to the Word of God. That's what true friends do. Yes. True friends will actually tell you what the Bible says, even if you would walk away from them, if they truly love you. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have a godly man do whatever it takes to wake me up yeah. than to have a heathen tell me that everything's all right when it's not. Yeah. If you're on your way to hell and right. somebody says, mm -hmm. oh, praise the Lord, brother, you're just doing fine. They don't love you. They're not doing you a favor. That's not going to help you in the long run. No. What will help you is the truth will set you free. The truth. And you know, this is so important because in our modern day culture, it's so subtle, 
but I've seen it in sayings in social media and on and on media in general, mm -hmm. where friends are people who encourage you only, uh, only, basically always tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. But according to the word, we need to make sure that our friendship is defined by the word of God, not by what the world says a friend is. Because remember, that's temporary. If people only tell you what you want to hear, then I would check out there's some motives there exactly. that may not be pure. Because a true friend, when a friendship is founded on the Word of God, a true friend who really loves you will always tell you the truth in love, even, even if it hurts your feelings. Because if yeah. you're headed for the ditch, they want you to know, hey, watch it, you're headed for the ditch. Yeah. They're trying to protect you, they're trying to help you. Now again, I'm not saying this is not an attitude of, well, I'm gonna tell you like it is. I'm going to, you know, put you in your place. Or That's control not, you. Or, or control. Or, I'm not talking about you know, control in any way. Right. I'm talking about true friends encourage each other or challenge each other to come up higher in love to the Word of God. Let me give you an example. All of these friends here with us today, we're going to talk about filming for a while. We're going to talk about the beauty of God's creation. But we're always going to get to the Word. And We're when we diseases, start discussing we, the Word, we all start challenging each other to come up higher yeah. to be a doer of the Word. So that's what we're talking about here. A true friend will sharpen you, gotcha. will help you grow. Amen. And so when it comes to being loyal, also a true friend is a loyal person. This means they don't walk away. Proverbs 27.10 says, never abandon a friend. Mm. And I thought that was so good. Proverbs 17.17 17 says, a friend loves at all times. You know, no matter what mood you're in, a friend loves at all <laughs> times. <laughs> That's good. We got to remind each other, That's honey. Come on. <laughs> okay. And is born as is a brother for adversity. Now, That's this right. just means a true friend will stick with they you quit through on the you tough when stuff. It gets tough. Right. They don't walk away when it gets hard. Yeah. And so, a friend, a true friend in the new living, it says a friend is always loyal. Yeah. So love here, this is so important for you to understand. When it comes to true friends, love is not a feeling. Love is a commitment. And that is what we base our friendship on. The love of God within us is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we can do this. And God said, God's love says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake never. you. So that's the level of commitment that we can walk in. And that commitment is the difference in being a phony friend and a real friend. Right, right. That's the, that's the bottom line. I mean, a true friend, when adversity comes, when you're at your worst, when disease strikes your body, or, mm. or somebody does something and they hurt, they say something and they walk away from you, and you're just hurting, or you're in a weakened state. Of course, that's when the devil attacks. When the enemy attacks you, and it's the perfect storm, and the enemy has set up all these situations, and they're all coming together at once. A true friend will not walk away at that point. A true friend is there for adversity. Mm. When it's up against the wall time, that's when a brother is born. A sister who's a true friend yeah. is there for you when it's hard. Yeah. When it's intense. Amen. You won't be alone. God will have somebody there for you that really is a brother or sister right. and a true friend. So love is a commitment. We're That's committed. Right. I'm committed to you, honey. <laughs> I'm committed to you, baby. And John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. That's right. Now this means true friendship. Let me put this on a practical level for you day to day. When you lay down your life for your friends, it's talking about laying down also your, your, what you want, your desires or your needs. You prefer the other person. The Word actually talks about we're to prefer one another. So every day, Mylon and I are looking for ways to lay down our life for each other and prefer each other's needs and wants. Mm. And we do that in the marriage. We also do that with our friends. Now, this is something real simple, but... Where do you want to go to, eat? go to eat? Well, no, you choose. No, it's your turn. We prefer each other. What would you like to do tonight? We've talked about loyalty. Now we're going to talk about being faithful. And the definition of faithful is firm in adherence to the truth. That means 
adhering to the truth, which is the Word of God, firmly adhering to duty, loyal, constant mm. in the performance of duties or services. Boy, that's good. That's awesome. They remain constant. A faithful friend will just keep doing what they need to do. That's There's right. no emotional roller coaster. That's right. Um, constant in performance, true to one's word. Honest. A faithful friend will keep their word. Integrity, yes. True to the marriage covenant. When you're faithful to the marriage com covenant, constant, not fickle. That means a faithful friend won't be swayed in their commitment by their emotions That's or right. circumstance. They're not fa fickle, they're constant. That's what faithfulness is. So a faithful friend understands covenant because God is a covenant God. That's good, baby. That's awesome. <laughs> Proverbs 20 and verse 6 says, Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find? And that's the NIV. I'm going I'm to read that again. To, man, this is, this is a description that is just, we all need to get this in our hearts. Yeah. Many claim to have unfailing love. Many people have said to you, I'm your friend, and I'll always be beside you, and I'll stick with you. Mm. And you can look around, where are they today? Yeah. What? Because a faithful person, God said, who can find? There are some, but boy, they are a rare thing. They shouldn't be. Yeah. Christians shouldn't be unfaithful. Christians shouldn't walk away from each other because we're different. And we are, we have our own things going on in our own life that cause pressure and stress. And nobody knows that those things are going on. We don't always talk about all those things. Some things we're praying about, some things we're thinking about that, that are uh, stressful and intense. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the Word says that it's rare to find a truly faithful friend. Yeah, the word a, a says that. A faithful person. It's rare. Yeah. In our culture today, faithfulness is not valued because self has been elevated to first place. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many <laughs> selfies do you see being taken today? I mean, we take them all the time to show people where we are, and we, we, we take them usually if there's a whole bunch of people in there. But, I mean, let me just read you something about how self has been elevated and the you deserve it, just do whatever feels good to you. Yeah. Selfies, there were 93 million selfies posted each day on IG. On Instagram. And that was last year when this, this information was given. A thousand selfies are posted on Instagram, Instagram every 10 seconds. Wow. Google reports 24 billion selfies a year. And that was last year. I'm sure it's more this year. You know, I'd like to add here, the reason why this is so important is because self has been elevated. So if you're going to be a faithful friend, you are going to have to lay down self to be faithful. There are going to be times where to keep your word, That's you're going right. to have to sacrifice what you wanted to do in the moment or what yeah. you had planned to be that faithful friend. So that's why. Or you, or you might have to just simply forgive. Right, right. Because somebody's done something that hurt you mm -hmm. and it's not right and they're not aware of it and they didn't ask you to forgive them. Yeah, but that's true. But it's just the right thing to do for Jesus mm -hmm. and have mercy on them and give them some grace and keep standing by them. That's the bottom line. Right, so that's why self, being self-centered and being consumed with self is so dangerous because there's no way you're going to be able to be a true friend and be consumed with yourself. It's just not possible. You will have to lay down your life for your friends if you really want to enjoy true friendship. And the wonderful thing is when Mylon and I are both laying down our life for each other and we're preferring one another, when we're both giving, then we both win. Nobody misses That's out in right. that scenario. Amen. And so it's it's always a blessing. God's way is the highest way, and it's always the blessed way. And you will enjoy your relationships That's and right. your friendships more when you do it God's way. Anytime mm -hmm. you get in a given contest, right. everybody wins. That's right. Amen. Luke 16 and verse 10 says, He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful, faithful also much. in much. Yeah. And he who is dishonest and unjust in a little thing, a very little thing, is mm -hmm. dishonest and just also in much. Yeah. And if you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, now we're talking about friendship. Yeah. Ooh, Whether that's God good. or man, that's good. if you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, 
who will give you that which, which is, is your, your own. own. Wow. This is how we grow in faithfulness. We practice. Practicing in what we would consider the little things yeah. in our relationship with others. Yeah. We practice being quick to forgive. Yeah. And slow do. to anger. Amen. Now, I mean, you do understand that takes practice. That is not natural for our flesh. Just being, oh, a really sweet person all the time. Are you kidding me? You know, we have a tendency to want what we want, and we want everybody else to do things our way yeah, instead of being practicing what we would consider very little things. Because God said, I'm watching. I see how you treat that stuff that you don't think is important. You, you, you get sarcastic and rude to people and that you should be showing honor to. Yeah. And, that, and you just tell them off, you've, you've had enough of this, that, or the other. And, yeah. and I've done it. I've done, I mean, what I'm telling you about, the reason we're talking about this is these are things we want to change. We want to grow up in this. I'm going to close with this today. Proverbs 28 and verse 20 says, A faithful man shall abound with blessings. Yeah, there's the reward. Oh, come on, somebody. Yeah, you choose to be now, faithful. That's I'm going right. to say that again. Because <laughs> there isn't anybody watching this show that doesn't want to abound with blessings. Yeah, abound. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Big blessings. Abundant. Lots of abounding blessings. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. How? By being a faithful man or a faithful woman, yeah. a true friend of God, yeah. a true friend of man, Amen. a true friend of whoever your friends are. True friends don't walk out. They don't. I mean, think of all the people you've known in your life that at one time you were super, super close. BFFs. <laughs> and where are they now? Somebody got offended and you just spiritually assassinated each other and walked away. And that, that's it. I'm done with you. I ain't talking to you anymore. You're out of my life. Somebody gets mad at you because you aren't following them on Twitter anymore. <laughs> Give me a break, people. I mean, what's important in life? You want to be faithful in big things? You want God to let you be in charge? You got to be faithful, faithful in these little things. Mm -hmm. Well, man, we're going to be praying for you. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Yeah. Father, we all need help with this, Lord. We know that we can grow in this. And so I lift up my brothers and sisters and I ask you yes. to help them mm -hmm. as they make a determination to come closer to you and therefore to be a better friend to you and a better child of God and also to be a better friend to those around about them. Thank you. Bless Lord. them, Lord, and help them. And I give you praise and glory for it in Jesus' name. Hey, Amen. man, get in touch with us at mylon.org. Is there anything we can do for you to help you to not only get to heaven, but to enjoy the trip. Okay. And don't forget to stay in the Word because that will keep you on, on the, the road, road to freedom. freedom.